In FM Chat, you can turn your messages into clickable links using a feature called Data Detectors. I would like to show you an example of this by creating an event invitation that you can actually accept right within FM Chat. So behind my FM Chat window here, I have a, the event management file. Uh, this is just that free template that comes with FileMaker Pro. I'm going to use this as an example uh, on how to get this working in your solution. So if we go back to the FM Chat window, I want to log in. And once logged in here, you want to click on Admin Setup. And then we're going to go to the Data Detectors tab. And in the Data Detectors tab, uh, we do actually have quite a few data detectors already pre-populated. Uh, we kind of tried to think of the uh, you know, most common scenarios for using this. So a web address, FTP, uh, shortened web address, maybe some shipping, you know, FedEx, uh, things like that. Uh, are already in here and this can give you a great idea of how these can be used in other scenarios too. You can use these uh, as kind of templates. Uh, down at the bottom specifically are great templates. Uh, these approve and deny uh, because this actually shows you how to run a script in an external solution from within FM Chat, and that's where I want to go with this right now. Uh, so we're going to go through how to do this in the context of my event management file here. So I'm going to show all records here. What I want to accomplish is I want to be able to send somebody an invite to, let's say, this company meeting that I've set up. And I want them to show up as a guest and their status is attending. So rather than making all my users come here, find this event, uh, put in their name, and select status attending, I think it would be great if I could just send out a mass message to everybody I'm inviting and let them do that work. So let's go back uh, to FM Chat, and we're going to go back to that window that was open, the Preferences window, and I want to run you through how to do that. So the first step is we need to click Add More uh, to add a new detector, and you'll notice that there's three columns here. So this first column, Prefix, is actually the data that it's looking for, uh, or I should say the tag that it's looking for, to know if it needs to evaluate a data detector or not. So in this case, it's looking for this exact text in your message. It's looking for deny colon. And up here, if I scroll to the top, it's real obvious here, uh, you know, with HTTP or www, you type in a web address, it's going to see that you've typed in HTTP colon slash slash, and it's going to know everything that comes after that is data that it needs to evaluate. Same here with www dot, uh, and so on and so forth. So let's start with what we want our prefix to be. In this case, I'm dealing with events. I think it makes the most sense to have my prefix be uh, event because that's easy to type, easy to understand. But I don't want to just have it be the word event because somebody might type the word event multiple times in messages all throughout FM chat, and we don't want that evaluating data uh, just because they type that word. So I want to make this something a little bit more unique, so I'm going to put a colon after it. You could use a slash slash, you could use colon slash slash, um, you know, there's any, any option there, but just be aware that anytime somebody types this, it's going to try to evaluate whatever data comes after it. Uh, and that is whatever data comes after it with no space. If they put a space after that colon, then it's not going to evaluate. It always evaluates up, into, up to the first space. So that's the prefix, and the next step is the URL. And this is what will actually get turned into as far as the clickable link goes. So what happens when you click on that? Uh, and, and I'll demonstrate the usage here in a second, but uh, what we need to do is we need to build a URL that will allow FileMaker to execute that script in my event management file. So we're going to use the FileMaker Pro script URLs, and you can see we have two examples up here right above, so I'm going to use that to build this. Um, as a template essentially. So with a script URL it always starts with fmp colon slash slash and then it's going to want the IP address of the file uh, or the IP address of where the file is hosted and we have nice little variables down here that will help you out so we have prefix, data, host IP, file name as all predefined uh, variables that, that you can use to put in here. So in this case, I just want to get the IP address of where FM Chat is hosted. So we're going to use the host IP uh, variable. So that's enclosed in double brackets. 
and then we're going to put a slash after it. The next one it needs is the file name of the file where we want this script to execute. If it was executing in FM chat, we could actually use the file name variable, uh, but since we're not, we have to ha uh, hand code or hard code, sorry, the event management file name. So we're going to put in event space management, and then we're going to end this with a question mark. And the next thing it's going to look for is the uh, script name. So we're going to put in the word script equals and then the script name and in this case I made a script here in my event management file so if we go to manage scripts down to the bottom you can see this fmc underscore add guest that's the script I created so we'll close this navigate back to the window we we're in so fmc underscore add guest and we're gonna use the ampersand and we're gonna create a parameter here so param equals so what this is telling it is it's saying what comes after this is the parameter that's going to get passed in with this script right here. Uh, and so we can utilize another variable here. So we could hard code something in. So I can say uh, this data, uh, something like that, but I don't want to. I want this to be dynamic. I, in this case, I want whatever's typed in after the word event colon to be the parameter. And to do that, I'm going to use my data parameter so we'll put that in double brackets and that's down here uh, so data is whatever comes after the prefix in this case if I was going to say event uh, company meeting this would be considered the data this would be considered the prefix uh, if I typed that into a chat window and then the last column here is how the link displays. So this is how it's going to display to anybody viewing this chat message. So you could have it display uh, as it's shown, um, or how it's typed, I should say, by typing in uh, bracket bracket uh, prefix bracket bracket and then data. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the prefix and then the data, whatever's after it, and just display it as it is. Uh, but in this case, I want it to look a little nicer. So I'm going to replace prefix with the word event, and I'm going to put a dash after there. So now it's going to say event dash, and then whatever that event name is. Okay, so now we've added our data detector. Um, we want to apply this, so I'm going to click Apply Settings. Now, it does bring up a little note here uh, that these changes will only be applied to messages created from here on out. So any messages that have tried to use that uh, prefix in the past um, before it existed, obviously those are still not going to work. Um, it's only messages created from here on out that, that this will work. Uh, also, anybody who is logged into the system currently will need to close out of FM chat and bring it back uh, up for this to apply to them. So just be aware that this will not apply to all users uh, who are currently logged in. So we're going to close out here. Uh, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to log in as a different user. We're going to test this guy out. So let's go to start a chat. I'm going to start a chat with myself and start chat. And again, we could have picked everybody in here if we wanted to. It doesn't have to be just one person. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly demonstrate. Um, please sign up for this. And I'm going to say event colon. So that's our prefix that we specified. And then the event is company space meeting. Now one limitation here is uh, spaces. Because a data URL is only evaluated up until the first space, if I put a space there, it's not going to grab that whole name. So if I put, uh, for example, company and then it was meeting so we'll go back here space meeting it's actually only going to grab this first part up to company so what what we did here in this case is I actually need to replace that space with some other character so I'm going to use the plus but it could be any character it doesn't have to be the plus um, you could even make this maybe all one word and then make sure in here it's all one word but to me, the easiest thing was in my script, and we can go back to it here in event management. All I do is I take that, uh, that parameter that's passed in, and I substitute pluses for spaces. Now, you might want to use more error checking than that in your solution, but that was the quick and dirty way for me to accomplish that. 
So just be aware that any spaces uh, will, anything after that space will get ignored as a parameter. Uh, so I can click send, and that's going to come through here. So now we have Frank Miller, or sorry, Fred Miller asking me to sign up uh, for this event company meeting. So I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to sign out. So I'll sign back in as myself here. So that was Fred asking me to sign up for that. Now, I'm on the other end of this, and I'm going to get a message that pops up now asking me to sign up for this company meeting. Oh, in fact, here we are. So that message just popped up, and we have Fred here asking me to sign up for this event, company meeting. So if I'm ready to sign up, all I have to do is click the link, and it took me to uh, that record here, and you can see it put my details in. It put my name, it put my status, and whatever else I wanted it to do based on that script. So you can see it's really powerful some of the things you can do. Uh, we included the approve and deny data detector, for example, so you can approve an invoice or deny an invoice, uh, depending on maybe your, your workflow and your office. Um, hopefully with that example, you can build on that and make it work for uh, your scenario. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please direct them to seed code, and I hope this video serves you well. Thank you.